Hey nerds! Today I want to talk about one of my new favorite subjects, graphic novels. This past summer I took a class as part of my master's program called Graphic Novels in Libraries and basically it was just a summer full of reading graphic novels. I think I've read over 30 titles this year which is more than I've read in the rest of my life combined. I already liked graphic novels but I didn't really know them all that well and I hadn't read very many and now that I've taken this class and I've learned more and I've read more I am just totally in love with this storytelling format. I'm just in awe at graphic novel authors and illustrators and how they're able to weave together art and text and make those two things work together to tell a seamless story and the way they incorporate symbolism and motifs and all these great literary and artistic devices. I don't know if I could ever write a graphic novel myself, but I will continue to enjoy reading them. Anyway, today I just wanted to share a few of my favorite graphic novels in case there are some of you out there who are like me a few months ago and want to read more of these amazing artistic artistic books. First up is a pretty recent and very popular graphic novel that was adapted from a webcomic. It's still out there online. I will put the link to the webcomic down below. That is Check Please. This is book one hashtag hockey by Ngozi Ukazu. Check Please is about this little cutie, Eric Biddle, also known as Biddy. He is a former figure skating champion from Georgia who is now the newest member of his university's hockey team up in New England. He also loves to bake hence the pie in his arms. It's a romance, it's a sports story that I think will still appeal even to people who don't like sports, and it is hilarious. It has the best sense of humor in it. I instantly knew that I was going to love this graphic novel at the end of chapter two with this panel. Anyway, it's just fun and adorable and has a fantastic cast of characters that I am in love with, and it takes place during college. I know more people are looking for stories that take place during those college years, so if that's you, this might be the book for you. Book one takes place over Biddy's freshman and sophomore years, and book two, which will cover his junior and senior years, comes out next April. Next up, another adorable graphic novel, this one for a younger age group, is Nico Bravo and the Hound of Hades by Mike Cavett. Yero. This is a hilarious, really great middle grade graphic novel. Nico works in a celestial supply shop that furnishes merchandise for gods, heroes, and other mythical creatures. One day they are visited by the great great granddaughter of Beowulf, who is ready to take on the family tradition of monster hunting, and her plan to do that is by killing Cerberus. Of course, Nico knows that killing Cerberus will have catastrophic effects, seeing as Cerberus is the only thing keeping all of the dead in the underworld. So he he decides to chase after Eowulf on her quest to try and stop her. This graphic novel was hilarious. I'm usually not a huge fan of middle grade books, but turns out I think I like middle grade graphic novels better. And especially if you like things like Percy Jackson and all the mythology, this is a really fun one because it combines a bunch of different mythologies and legends together into one book. My next graphic novel is another one for slightly younger readers, but of course older readers can enjoy it because I did. I don't have a copy of it with me so I'll just put some images of it and the cover on the screen as I talk and it is The Giver by Lois Lowry, the graphic novel adaptation which is by P. Craig Russell. I adore Lois Lowry's The Giver. It was the first dystopian book I ever read back in sixth grade. It's one of the few books that I had to read for a school English class that I actually enjoyed. I think I read it twice in middle school. And I know a lot of other people have a really special place in their heart for this book which is why I was so happy to see how well done the graphic novel was. I think that P. Craig Russell took a lot of care with the story and the world. Let's be honest, the movie adaptation of The Giver was not great, and I think that this graphic novel does what the movie didn't with regards to translating this story into a visual format. As one would expect, it makes a really great use of incorporating color and using that to represent emotions and the new things that Jonas is learning, and gradually there's more and more incorporation of color as Jonas learns to see the different colors and feel the different emotions. It is so good. If you love The Giver, or even if you've never read it, or if you know a child who's having to read it for school for the first time, definitely check out the graphic novel adaptation because I really think that it is fantastic. Fantastic. For a slightly more serious graphic novel, this was actually one of the first graphic novels that I really fell in love with and realized how great of a storytelling format it can be. It is Lighter Than My Shadow by Katie Green. It is a 
massive graphic novel. Lighter Than My Shadow is sort of autobiographical. It is based on Katie Green's own struggles with eating disorders and sexual assault, and it handles both of those matters in a really delicate, really thoughtful way. She uses these dark scribbles all throughout the story to represent the dark, confusing thoughts that follow her everywhere and start to surround and consume her later in the book. And there's a lot of other imagery and symbolism throughout the graphic novel that I think does a really good job of capturing the way that she feels and the way that her mind is playing tricks on her and represents what she's kind of picturing and feeling about her body even though it isn't true. Art does a really fantastic job of capturing that in a way that text on its own couldn't. Definitely a book to be cautious of if you are currently struggling with an eating disorder because some of the content could maybe be a little bit triggering for you, but if this is a book that you can handle I highly recommend it because I think it's very beautiful, very insightful. I learned a lot from it and I just think that it handles the material really well and has a lot of important things to say. And finally, another graphic novel that's been pretty popular recently, The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This is a lovely anachronistic historical fiction fairy tale. I just adored it so much. The prince is Sebastian and his dressmaker and best friend is Francis. Sebastian has a secret life where at night he goes out and dresses up as Lady Cristalia and Francis is the one who helps him do it. It has these beautiful colorful illustrations and it's just a wonderful story of friendship, love, fashion, identity, and acceptance. I love it so so much and I highly recommend it if you have not read The Prince and the Dressmaker yet. It's definitely one of my top picks for a graphic novel. And lastly an honorable mention because it's not really a graphic novel but if you are interested in graphic novels and comics and you are not signed up for webtoons yet you definitely need to get on that. Basically it's a website and an app. I definitely recommend the app because it's easy to read on your phone that has a whole bunch of web comics from different creators and there are new episodes for each one released each week. The big one that people really love and that I've seen advertised everywhere is the reason I started looking at webtoons and it is my favorite is Lore Olympus which is this cool kind of modern retelling of Hades and Persephone with some other gods and myths mixed in. It has really cool colorful artwork and the story is just amazing and there's so much micro tension in it. I think there's a lot to learn from storytelling when you read that webtoon. So definitely check it out. It's a whole bunch of webcomics that you can read for free so who doesn't like free stories? That's it for today nerds. If you have some favorite graphic novels that I haven't mentioned here, definitely drop that down in the comments so that I can check them out and so that everyone else can share and find some new stories to read as well. And don't forget to join us this Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time for our live chat. We really hope to see you there.